Welcome agents, today we got a fairly light state of the game but it did include news on the loot pool for the new discovery mode for the raid, a new shepherd feature coming with title update 5, new apparel event coming next week and more. Now if you enjoy this one please hit the like button below, subscribe for dedicated division content and let's get right into it. Okay so today Hamish was joined by Yannick, they confirmed they are aware of all the discussions surrounding loot, RNG and all the other stuff and this is still an ongoing discussion but they are waiting for the release of Title Update 5 coming next Tuesday the 23rd before they start talking about this stuff. They confirm no maintenance will be coming tomorrow due to TE5 coming out next week. The devs clarified that only classified assignments are exclusive to the Year 1 Pass owners and Year 1 Pass owners will only get 7 day early access to the narrative content, i.e. the two new main missions. Moving on and the devs confirm that the Discovery Mode loot pool will consist of guaranteed 500 gear drops but it will not reward you with the Eagle Barrel or any raid exclusive gear sets like uh, Aces and Eights for example. Yannick Nan stated that the discovery mode is for people who would like to experience the mechanics of the raid but they don't have a min-max build yet or for people who want to prepare for the raid in this mode by meeting like-minded people and forming groups to take on the normal raid. I've said my piece on this before so I'm just going to move on. Next up the devs confirmed some changes made to the social space outside of the White House Take a look. Take a look at some of those changes. So uh, this was captured yesterday, actually, from the build that's coming out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So actually, if you walk out the front of the White House and come out to this area where yeah. the helicopter is, there are some other things that you can do out here. So crafting and recal. Yeah, it looks a bit different, yes. Yeah. So just so you know where these things... It was in the PTS already? Yes. But just for the people who don't know about this, crafting and recal is here. Yeah. There you go. Optimization table, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the full list of everything that is out there, mm -hmm. but... Moving on, and the devs confirmed a new Shepard feature coming with TE5, which is tied to the call for backup. It's almost like an enhanced experience. How it works is if you answer a call to backup and go to someone's session and help them out, they can endorse you, which gives you Shepard experience. There will be commendations attached to this and arm patches as well. They confirmed your Shepard rank goes up to 99, and there will be possible cosmetic tied to this, but this has been not confirmed. There will also be a wing icon next to your name showing your Shepard rank. On screen now, you're going to see how this works. Uh, so if you had a good time, and uh, <laughs> I love that the person is clapping. Fantastic. You will get Shepard experience. Moving on, the devs confirm there are still some issues with the Revive Hive and the Specialization Ammo Pickup, which are still being investigated. The devs confirm the unique Twitch Prime rewards can be redeemed right now. The devs briefly responded to chat, stating they are due to have Redstorm on in the near future to discuss PvP and all the discussions within the community are being worked on. They are not ignoring us. The devs finished the stream by confirming a new apparel event named Heatwave will be coming out with TU5 next week. They didn't confirm if it will be coming out on the same day, i.e. Tuesday, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see about that. Alright, so as I said at the start, a pretty light one today, but as it is a short one, I want to end it by including this fantastic video from Massive. It's called A Massive Research Trip, Capturing the Sound of Silence, which is an exclusive mini-documentary following the Division 2's audio team on their research trip to Chernobyl uh, last year. This is not my footage, it's actually been uploaded to Massive Entertainment's channel, but I wanted to give it to you guys here in case you've not seen it, because it's really worth the watch. It really will make you appreciate all of the fantastic sounds within the game, especially the Dark Zone, where a lot of the Chernobyl sort of sounds are used. It's well worth the watch. So I hope you enjoy this. Thanks very much for watching. And yeah, enjoy. We were a team of five. There was Benjamin and Olivier from Editorial Creative Services, Diego, our cameraman, Thomas Maddox and I, who were the sound recordists for this trip. While working on the Division 2, we were looking for ambiences that would match an urban environment without any human activity. And that's why we decided to go to Chernobyl on a recording trip. So gentlemen, basically we have entrance uh, that part of the zone that is not really inhabited. It doesn't disturb in terms of preparation, we decided to split the type of microphone between Tom and I, so we could record as many sounds as possible depending on the situation once there. 
capturing sound is like you can capture the same subject with this microphone or that microphone the same way you would change lens on your camera so it's not only about the gear but it's also about the choice that you make as a sound recordist what do you want to capture in which angle and in what way and the results won't be the same Silence was very important for us in general in our game because DC is supposed to have lost most of his population and the dark zones were the zones that were the most exposed to the disaster. So we really had to express that sensation of solitude and absence of life. We were next to a, a river and we were playing with huge metal plates to get those eerie sounds that you can hear in a dark zone. I think recording real sounds is very important for authenticity. If you don't have real sounds, then people start not believing it. The sounds have to be real. It makes everything credible and helps with the immersion in the game and extend what you see and what you're playing. As we arrived on the radar location, we were absolutely blown away by the size of it. Tom had the very good idea of recording inside, putting his mics inside the, the radar, something that actually Justin, the audio director at Red Storm Entertainment, used a lot into the dark zone to give that eerie feeling from time to time. I think I like to create sounds for video games because I want to give intention to my sounds and to the subject I'm working on. We should always give some intentions, some emotions. Where, where do we want to drive the player to? I think as a sound designer, having those recording trips allow us to have specific materials. It makes what the player is going to hear our own and very unique. Tom, can you try to do some like with some, you let it die? Like the, the reverb is there, but can you let it die in between the in, in between the turn? The amusement park is when we started to explore the environment to do some in situ foggy. So whether it comes from pulling a rock or interacting with a piece of metal, we try to manually generate noise that would reflect the environment and give a little bit more life to the silence. We found this huge merry-go-round that we could use to record from different perspectives. And that's something that you can't do outside in a normal area because the environment is too noisy. The fact that we were in this huge, empty, half-destroyed factory, we decided to once again explore and use what was surrounding us to capture those sounds within the environment itself. We decided to interact with levers, rocks, walking on glass or anything that we could find. You also have a lot of buildings that started crumbling down, so you, you find yourself in rooms that are half-open, half-enclosed. You never have that anywhere else and so quiet at the same time. I think those props gave us the opportunity to get the sound of how a city that is not being maintained by humans anymore would sound. Another really good idea that uh, Thomas came up with was to pop balloons in those environments. <laughs> Popping balloons create a burst of sounds that basically allow us to take a print of uh, what's surrounding us. And this print can be used in the game to recreate reverb that are matching uh, the environment. It was a supplementary layer uh, that was really interesting for them to use to give a, a more creepy and eerie feel to the dark zones. The 
fact that we could go there at night, thanks to our guide, made the entire difference. There is a certain feel about it that adds some variation and it's important for our game because we have that day and night cycle and uh, we wanted to match that. I think that's one of the great things about working at Massive and in video games in general. You get to explore places that you wouldn't do on your own. This journey was a great experience and I'm really glad I had the chance to be a part of it. And creating this unique experience for our players was only possible thanks to all the people involved. I never thought I would go to Chernobyl, but I'm glad I did it with Massive and it was an amazing opportunity for us to record unique and bespoke sounds for our game. <laughs>